five million times around the world. That's how much DNA there is in you right now for you to exist. That is not a sign of disorder. <laughs> that is a sign of extreme amount of order, extreme amount of organization and complexity. So maybe, you know, if you were one of those species that found one of these planets that hasn't figured out the organization and the complexity and the support that the universe generates in order for you to be there, you'd probably try to give them a bunch of drawings in their crops and stuff, try to educate those people before you try landing on the White House lawn, <laughs> right? Because you probably won't find no volunteers to go and get shot, right? So, uh, so, but did they only talk to us about the geometry of the vacuum, the geometry of reality? No, they didn't. They actually talked to us directly in binary code. We have been contacted. Um, two summers ago, this crop circle occurred. It's the only crop circle that ever made it to the mainstream media news all around the world. I had friends calling me from the eastern U.S. telling me, I just saw a crop circle on the 5 o'clock news. The reason why this crop circle made it to the 5 o'clock news around the world is because it occurred in the middle of a rainstorm. It rained all night, cats and dogs, and in the morning, this crop circle was there in this field, the largest crop circle ever to occur, 409 circles. It's enormous. And basically, it told the world crop circles are not just hoaxes. There is crop circles that are not hoaxes. Well, the next crop circle about after this one did not make the mainstream news around the world, most likely because it was too shocking. The next crop circle that occurred was a reply to this. In 1972, Carl Sagan and other physicists, astrophysicists, figured that we had just finished building the Arecibo radio telescope, the largest radio telescope on Earth, and we had the opportunity to send a very strong signal into the universe that could reach a faraway planet one day. <laughs> and maybe they would decode the signal and then send the signal back, and then it would reach our planet one day and we would know that there's living entities out there. But uh, that would take a few thousand years. They still decided to send a signal to give a chance to our grand-grand-grand-grand-grandchildren to get, you know, a chance to have a talk with other beings out there. So they figured out a way to send a signal that would be the easiest for others to decode. They use a binary code of ones and zeros, just like a computer, and that can be transferred to a punch card, just like a computer punch card. Okay? And what does it say? It says, we're made out of carbon. This is our chart of elements. This is our DNA. We have a small head, big body, we live on the third planet from our sun. And, and you see, that's the sun, that's the third planet we live on. And this is the Arecibo radio telescope we're sending this way. This is the technology we're sending this way. 
a radio telescope. So they sent it in 1972 and two summers ago across a radio telescope commonly hired by SETI to listen for a reply came two crop circles, one being a reply to the Arecibo radio telescope signal and the other one being a nice little mugshot. Did you hear about that crop circle? No. When SETI was asked about this, you know, uh, SETI is the, is the NASA, you know, um, search for extraterrestrial life, you know, it, they're listening with huge radio telescope to see if they can hear something out there that would be life on another planet. One day I'm going to make a comic strip with a huge radio telescope, a SETI guy with the big earmuffs, you know, listening. And in the background, back here, a little UFO. <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh, when, when they saw this, they said, well, it's got to be a hoax. Because if they wanted to talk to us, they wouldn't have sent a crop circle. The radio telescope was right beside it. Why didn't they just send a, a radio signal? Well, my reply to that is, if they would have sent a radio signal, you and I would never have heard about it. Maybe they wanted to talk to all of the people of the planet, not just a few agencies, right? So instead, they sent a radio, instead of a radio signal, they sent, they put the crop circles, reply directly across from the radio telescope. <laughs> and you got to realize that here you have a governmental installation that has infrared cameras, guards, and all of this. Nobody saw nothing. Right? And it's not like Doug and Dave can go in that field and do that all night and nobody noticed. And then when you look closely, the, wo the, wo the woven uh, patterns of the hay are not reproducible readily in the middle of the night thumping around. The actual mugshot is an incredible uh, pattern that generates a negative image of a, a picture. And you can tell that that being has large eyes, a small nose, a small mouth. And the reply says, this is what we sent, this is what came back. It says, we are carbon and silica. Our table of elements is a little, is very similar. It says, we have a three strand DNA structure. It says we have a big head and a small body. We live on three of the planets of our, of our solar system. The third one has four moons. And this is the technology we're sending this way. Now, this is not subject to interpretation. This is a binary code. They're talking to us directly. Okay? Now, when I saw this, I got really excited because I'm like, oh my God, they give us a blueprint of their technology. It's right there on the bottom. I'm like, whoa, how, what is this? Well, the resolution is really poor, so you can't tell what the heck it is. Well, they thought about that. They were nice about that. Because a year prior to this reply to the Arizabo message, in the exact same field, a year to the date of the reply, 
prior to the reply, to the day, this crop circle occurred, which is exactly what's at the bottom of the reply. Just to make sure we had a high resolution blueprint of how they're using their technology. Here's your radio telescope, it's the exact same in installation. You can, you can see here the fans, you know, and all the uh, security equipment, and this is right across from it. And that's what it looks like. Fractal tetrahedron geometry spheres. <laughs> Everything we've been discussing this morning. 